In this video, uh, we will talk about best practices of statistical data analysis. The problems in statistical data analysis, ethical principles of statistical data analysis, and best practices of statistical data analysis. So, as we have discussed before, statistical data analysis is the process of extracting useful information from data. Okay? But there are many problems with the practice of statistical data analysis. One reason is incompetency. For example, the data analyst did not check assumptions. So they just point to click, they just use the software on the data set and fit a model and start to draw conclusions. And they did not check data quality, such as the influence of outliers, influence of missing data, uh, errors in the data, such as uh, you know the abnormal values. Uh, if you do not check your data is in good shape, in good quality, then analysis results may be incorrect. And another incompetency is uh, use the inappropriate statistical methods. For example, if you have a um, binary dependent variable and you applied uh, multiple linear regression, which is not very appropriate because the multiple linear regression uh, requires the dependent variable to be a normally distributed variable, so continuous. So the binary dependent variable, uh, so you know, the more appropriate statistical model is the logistic regression model. All right. And another reason for problems with statistical data analysis are abuses and frauds. So, uh, for example, data phishing. Basically, uh, they are running the data analysis and doing hypothesis over and over and over again until they get p less than 0.5 and they get some results they desire. Okay, and because of the uh, nature of the hypothesis tests, if you use a fixed alpha level such as 0.05 and you're repeatedly doing the statistical test then the type 1 error rate will going up, approach to 100%. Okay. So, uh, if you do not understand these, then that's incompetency. If you know this, then still doing, you know, multiple testing, looking for results you want to have, that's called the phishing, data phishing. Okay. And of, of course, there are fabrication of data. They just made up data so that they get the results. And this uh, happened to some very prestigious uh, journals such as Science or Nature. So there were people who actually fabricated the data to publish results on prestigious journals uh, that want to become famous. Okay. So statistical data analysis must follow some uh, principles and best practices. First, the ethical principles of statistical analysis. Statistical data analysis can lead to decisions that may have serious consequences, such as cost of human life. Uh, for example, if you work for a pharmaceutical company and you're analyzing data from a phase three trial for testing a new drug, and if you don't do uh, a statistical data analysis uh, to the best of your ability following all the guidelines, all the principles, and you achieve an incorrect conclusion, uh, it may have very severe consequences. Okay, So ethical principles must be followed in statistical data analysis. And if you go to the American Statistical Association website, they have ethical guidelines for statistical practice. So basically, the, this is a, like uh, a 
history of uh, the ethical guidelines, how it was produced. And here are some of the topics of the ethical guidelines. I really don't have time to go over each and every one of them. Uh, so you can go to the ASE Ethical Guideline to Statistics Practice website and do more reading. So A is professionalism, B is responsibilities, responsibility in publication testimony, responsibility to research subjects, responsibility to research team colleagues, responsibility to other statisticians or statistical practitioners, responsibilities regarding allegations of misconduct, and responsibilities of employers. Okay. And some of the best practice of statistical data analysis, uh, one is never modify the raw data set. Always make a copy of the data and then work on the copy. Okay, so once you receive a raw data set, don't make any changes to it. Make a copy of the data set and save the raw data set in somewhere safe. Okay, so this is a where a what you, are, you originally receive. You don't want to change anything, okay? And then use audit trail to document all modifications to the data. So you should have a date, you should have who did the ch made the change, and what was changed. Okay, you have to document all the modifications so that in the future when people uh, review the analysis, review the data, they know uh, what changes have been made to the data. And you need to clean your data. Data quality must be checked before data analysis. So data cleaning, outliers, range check, abnormal values, missing data. So there, uh, you need to learn something about you know how to do data cleaning. Okay, actually probably 90% or uh, you know or more effort are spent on data cleaning. Okay, that's how serious uh, data quality is. And after the data is clean, the first thing you want to do is really graph and tabulate the data extensively before multivariate modeling. Okay, uh, look for patterns, trends, and outliers, and then uh, you know try to see if you need to. Uh, you know, what to do next. So, you want to make a lot of graphs, visualize your data, and you want to generate new variate statistics to learn more about your data. This is very important before you do any formal multivariate modeling. Okay, you want to know your data. And also, uh, you want to use syntax to make your analysis easily reproducible. So in this course, we really promote use of syntax. Of course, you, know, you can point and click SPSS to do uh, statistical analysis. The problem with that is uh, uh, if you do a very complex analysis, you're not going to be able to remember what you did. Okay. So syntax is a way you can record all the steps you went through, and then in the future, people just can run the syntax and reproduce all the analysis results you have got. Okay, so reproducible science uh, is another best practice. You know, you want to kind of uh, follow. Okay, principle you want to follow. Uh, always interpret your statistical analysis results and answer the research questions. So we're not analyzing data for analyzing data. Okay, we really want to answer the research question. So you, uh, after uh, the analysis, you don't want to just give people a bunch of tables and uh, graphs. You know, you have to interpret what they mean, and you need to use, um, you know, really plain English. You know, to explain, uh, to to answer the question people ask you from the very beginning. That those are the questions people are interested in, uh, and they want to listen to uh, your opinion. Your is the information you extracted from the data analysis in the language they can understand. So you always interpret and answer the research question. 
And also, you want to save the following. You know, the raw data set, the syntax, and the report. Okay, everything should be saved for reproducible sciences. Okay, when you're turning your final data and the product, you want to have all these three components uh, submitted to the person who uh, wants you to analyze the data. Okay, you just, uh, you know, just one report is not sufficient. Okay, so basically you have the data, you have the syntax, so anyone can run the syntax on the data to generate similar outputs, similar results. Okay.